Here are 10 roles in the biotech and pharma industry that you probably haven't considered yet. For so many people, when you think about working in the biotech industry or working in the pharma industry, usually your mind is you're going to be working in a lab. But laboratory scientists are only one type of role within the biotech and pharma industry. So in this video, I'm going to share 10 roles that you may not have considered that I think you should consider. Let's get into it. Product managers are often crucial members of the sales and marketing team at biotech and pharma companies. These people usually own a product. And when I say own a product, usually within biotech or uh, pharma companies, there are multiple products, right? And usually you have somebody that is a representative for that particular product. Product managers will usually liaise between the sales teams, the marketing teams, as well as the R&D or the research and development teams, right? To make sure everybody is on board. They're also really crucial when it comes to collecting customer insights that allow these teams to create a product that meets a specific customer pain because it's a terrible thing if you create a product and it doesn't meet any need within the market, right so product managers they are there to own the product right to liaise between these teams and ultimately to bring that product that solves that specific problem to the market Project management is really important at biotech and pharma companies as well because there are several projects that are ongoing and usually you need a project manager to keep everybody on task. And so having project management experience, which if you've done a master's degree or a PhD, you have some kind of project management experience because often you've taken a research project from start to finish right and you had steps in between there are programs out there right now i know that one of the most popular ones is a pmp program that allows you to learn the actual steps within project management this is something that you can consider if you want to go into project management within the biotech or pharma industry pharmaceutical companies especially are going to have regulatory affairs professionals and you can be at different stages within regulatory affairs itself but these regulatory affairs people make sure that the pharmaceutical company stays on the straight and narrow when it comes to regulations set forth by governments when it comes to the approval of certain drugs or medical devices so within the united states that's the food and drug administration so if you are a regulatory affairs person within a pharmaceutical company in the u.s you're making sure that we're meeting all those fda guidelines they may also have to be aware of other markets and their regulations, right? And so there's going to be Europe, maybe you're selling things to different parts of the world. They, you will want your regulatory affairs people to know what regulations exist so that those regulations, those guidelines are being met when drugs, medical devices have to be sold overseas outside of the U.S. as well. When I was a graduate student, okay, these group of people used to annoy me a little bit. <laughs> And I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize for that behavior now because I realize how crucial they are to the lifeblood of any biotech or pharmaceutical company, okay? So these are sales representatives and they are different people within the sales machinery of a biotech company or of a, of a pharmaceutical company that make sales. So I, I'm using the, this as an umbrella term, just like regulatory affairs is also pretty broad. So there's so many roles within regulatory affairs, right? So there's so many roles within sales as well. But essentially your role in this sales machinery let me call it that, of the pharmaceutical company or of the biotech company is to learn what customers need and potentially sell them the right solutions. This group of people, I love them, but when I learned about their job and what they have to do and the travel involved, you probably know what I'm gonna say, I was like, no, but, but they have really cool jobs, okay? I'm talking about medical science liaisons. So medical science liaisons are really, they're usually in the pharmaceutical industry and they're really crucial to the clinical trial process. 
the role and i have a, another video you can check out where, where i interviewed a phd who currently works as an msl uh, and we go deep into it but essentially their role is to interact with key opinion leaders in research institutions um, who can help them test a drug or medical device that needs to be approved so they need all this testing in order for it to go through the approval process they need clinical trials for it to go through the approval process and so these msls will interact with the researchers at the institutions that can help them set up that cl clinical trial so that it can be tested so their role is really really crucial because if they don't make that contact it's a medical science liaison they have to liaise between the company and the researchers or the KOLs at their institutions so they're really really crucial to that clinical trial process a cousin of the MSL role is the clinical trial liaison role just like the MSLs they're also crucial to the clinical trial process but their role is more on the patient recruitment patient enrollment side of things right and so they may be involved in that because with these clinical trials we're now testing the drug or medical device within human patients and so it's really important that they they have those conversations it's really important that they help with that and so that's what clinical trial liaisons exist for if you like checklists then you will definitely like being a quality control specialist Quality control specialists monitor production processes, they review product documentation, and they implement quality control procedures to ensure that the products that a biotech or a pharmaceutical company is producing are safe and they're effective. So absolutely they need to be they need to be on it, hence the checklist medical communications this is what i do and so i always get excited when it comes to talking about medical communications and you can work in different types of roles again medical communications is an umbrella term and um, you could be doing so many things as a medical communications professional you could be doing regulatory writing which is very very much on the pharma side of things where you are writing regulatory documents that the fda needs in order for a drug to safely go through that um, drug approval process or medical device approval process if you are a marketing writer right you're using your scientific knowledge as well as your marketing prowess to create marketing plans and marketing assets to get people to purchase right or create awareness um about whatever the product is technical writers may be writing manuals for the products that are being um, sold by the company so with medical communications you really could be working in multiple roles it's exciting and i highly recommend you check it out you usually find field application scientists within biotech and depending on the company the role is going to look kind of different but field the field in that name really means that they're out there in the field out there in the field talking to customers finding out what their problems are training customers on the equipment training customers on the tool on the software that the company the biotech produces and they often have a given geographical territory that they travel to do this and so field application scientists definitely will be traveling a lot kind of like the msls too who also travel a lot but this time it's it's more on the biotech side of things related to field application scientists are technical application scientists and technical application scientists usually also work on the biotech side of things and they will correspond with people via email via phone calls maybe via live chats um to troubleshoot problems that the users of the technology have. They're usually also scientists. They have broad knowledge of the product that is, has been created and is being used. And they're very, very helpful in, within the customer service slash sales slash marketing um, machinery of biotech companies. And there you have it 10 let me know if you enjoyed this video in the comments below if you found it helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up